I started the grouse and grazing project in 2012. I called uh, a colleague at Idaho Department of Fish and Game and asked him if he was interested in a long-term, large-scale experimental study to help us manage sage-grouse populations in a way that is compatible with land use in the state. And he and I had a couple discussions and then we formed a collaborative team of uh, agencies, managers, biologists, and ranchers to design and implement this 10-year uh, large-scale uh, study on the effects of grazing on sage-grouse. Well, ever since there's been concerns over sage-grouse declines in the West, um, there's been some at least that believed that human activities in the sage step landscape, like livestock grazing, could be the reason for those declines. Other studies have tried to address the question, but none have tried to address it to the extent that this project did, with a true replicated manipulative study across multiple study areas. The sagebrush ecosystem is widespread across the northern United States. It used to cover about 460,000 square miles but has been degraded by about 45% now. Loss of this ecosystem has led to decline in sage-grouse population since the mid-1960s, and it's now currently listed as near threatened by the Endangered Species Act. Livestock grazing is the number one use of land that where sage-grouse live and, uh, and raise their young. So it was immediately true that we had to understand what is that role between ranching and sage-grouse. And so if sage-grouse had been listed or if we found out that uh, sage-grouse habitats are really degraded by grazing, that would mean that a lot of ranchers would have to find new places to graze, especially in the spring. So this study was really the first study designed to evaluate the effects of livestock grazing at a scale that is pertinent, meaning the scale at which cattle are managed at the pasture scale. We were excited to participate. We have seen and observed through our management and our time on the land, the interaction and correlation between grouse and cattle, specifically in spring grazing. But we really didn't have any good scientific literature to, to support the observations that we were seeing on the ground. So we thought what a good opportunity to have the University of Idaho come out there and do a study to document what we see on a daily basis. The University of Idaho was the lead entity on this project from the outset. Each year we hired as many as 30 technicians and students to collect the field data at these five study sites. They would collect nesting success, brood success, survival, uh, nest site locations, and then they would also collect detailed information on the vegetation, the grass height and community composition of grasses, forbs, and shrubs at, at nest sites, but also at random locations throughout these pastures so that we could document how these pastures changed based on the how they were grazed. Tonight we'll be going out and hopefully capturing some sage-grouse hens. Uh, we'll be going out right after sunset. Go hopefully find some hens in their roost and we will use the ATVs to spotlight the hens and get as close as we can to put a net on them. <laughs> put collars on those hens so we can track them throughout the field season. But that's her number there. It means sage grouse female and the X0332. We will also weigh the hen. This is kind of a covariate to look at nest success. Ooh, 1520 to see if heavier hens are maybe more fit going into nesting season, so maybe are a little more successful or have larger clutch sizes. So Gavin's gonna turn on his red light, and then he's gonna go take that chicken somewhere back there. Oh, that's babies, good luck. Uh, this research is important because we're looking at a, a species that is potentially in decline, and this research will um, inform legislation in the future to, to try and help us protect sage grouse as well as helping protect the ranchers and the landscape and their livelihood because this is how they make a living. My study focuses on the arthropods, including insects, in sagebrush ecosystems. I want to discover how grazing is impacting arthropods because greater sage grouse eat arthropods in their diet, specifically in their early development. 
and these arthropods are very important for their fertility, success, and survival. I've learned that spring grazing results in increased abundance, biomass, and diversity, and six of the 10 families known as food arthropods of greater sage grouse are more abundant and biodiverse in two of the three sites, which means that there is more food available for greater sage grouse under that treatment. This 10-year study was designed to be the, the Cadillac of studies to explore and document the relationship between cattle grazing and sage grouse populations. And so we've been thoroughly documenting a half dozen demographic traits of sage grouse and how those traits are related to grazing intensity. And so the results are going to be unprecedented to inform grazing management guidelines and, and how to manage grazing to better ensure that it isn't adversely affecting sage-grouse populations. We chose to participate in this sage-grouse study because we wanted to answer the question in a scientific way whether or not the cattle are an adverse effect to the sage-grouse during spring grazing. We're, we've cooperated with them as best we could to help them find the answers that they need to go into this study. I'm hoping that as a result of this study, they'll find that sage grouse and the cattle are compatible. All of us at the table wanted the answer whether we liked it or not, So, and we've stuck true to that. So no matter whether you think livestock are good or bad, we were all in it to help the grouse, to understand the grouse habitat, and, and we've kept that all the way through. What we've found so far is that at currently managed levels, there is no effect of cattle grazing on sage grouse nesting success. And that is, is an important result because most of the management guidelines and the, the, the lawsuits and litigation so far have been completely based on the premise that livestock grazing reduces sage grouse nesting success. Our study is going to completely revolutionize how grazing management guidelines are written throughout the western U.S.